This is the town of Siavonga, home to approximately 78,000 people. It is the location of the massive Kariba Dam and hydroelectric power station built in the 1950s. It is also the location of one of the biggest lakes in Africa, Lake Kariba. For Zambia, the lake and station has brought many benefits for the country in terms of national development, but for the people of Siavonga, the story is not that simple. Before the damming up of the Zambezi River, people used to live somewhere inside there, where there is water now, which we are calling it the Lake Caribbe. Now, when the damming up of the lake and the water level started rising, people were pushed out from the area where they, they could produce food throughout the year. Uh, some people were even forced to move uh, a distance away from where they used to reside. For example, people in Chipepo were taken to Lusitu, to the land which is infertile. Up to now, these people are not able to produce food. Its secluded location has also contributed to the lack of development. This has left a once vibrant and productive people exposed to suffering and poverty. Even though a vibrant fishing industry and increased tourism has emerged in the community in the last 20 years, Siavonga still has many vulnerable inhabitants that lack food security and the ability to sustain their lives. Siavonga is one of the least developed districts, yet with massive opportunities. And in Siavonga, you don't see a lot of uh, developmental initiatives and especially in the area of support. There aren't many NGOs that have come to Siavonga because your cost per beneficiary is very high. Alexander Kasenzi has been in Siavonga for most of his life and has seen the changing characteristics of the town. Abbas Health basically was established to respond to the needs of the people so that Harvest Help would come in and offer that uh, developmental uh, opportunity for people to come up with suggestions and plans on how they would improve their livelihoods. With the work that we have put there, uh, the beneficiaries are happy because we have seen a lot of change in people's uh, attitude towards solving their own problems and we have also seen a big impact in terms of people coming up with alternative life rules. Food insecurity is a vast problem in the Siavonga and Gwembe districts due to erratic rainfall which leads to both droughts and flash floods. Along with a lack of irrigation, deforestation has led to soil erosion which robs many farmers of cultivatable land and leaves infertile and low producing soil. Aware of the vast issue of food insecurity in the rural areas, the Food for Asset program has been developed to assist the affected communities to build and develop assets. Food for Asset, basically we're talking about asset creation. This is a program which is supported by UNWFP and hosted by uh, community development and social uh, welfare. It's a program which is targeting the vulnerable community members, but those who are now able to be engaged into activities that will help improve their livelihoods. WFP began to support the Siabonga Food for Assets as part of an emergency operation. People have been displaced. Uh, the government disaster management unit had requested the support of the United Nations system. WFP as uh, one of the first defense lines at the UN in terms of disaster response um, basically uh, enacted these, these food for assets. Supporting people that had lost their livelihoods, uh, were displaced to very arid lands, um, where they could not manage to actually sort of, uh, sort of achieve any, any type of sustainable livelihood. At the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services, we created a unit that is Food Program Management Unit. This is the unit that is directly linked with the, the WFP, 
in the implementation of food for asset activity. This activity it is targeting at those vulnerable households who had no access to the means of maybe acquiring inputs like seed fertilizer. But through the efforts of the WFP and the Minister of Community Development, we are able to assist them with food that they would even get energy for them to carry out some activities which in turn they will create some assets. And in this program, we have seen some very remarkable uh, achievements. We, we have been able to phase out uh, some beneficiaries who were uh, recruited in the first phase. After receiving food support, they have been able to move forward and create some assets like uh, livestock. Uh, some have even managed to build houses. And in addition to just some physical things, some have been able to send their children to school, which is an investment. On the way to the various satellite locations in the Siavonga and Gwembe Valley districts, the 4x4s often get stuck. The Food for Asset program has proven that even though some distances are far and sometimes difficult to reach, it is a program that is helping people become self-reliant. Approximately 70 kilometers into the interior of Siavonga is Dibwe, one of the Harvest Help food security sites. This is the home of Mr. Kennedy Blanket, and his story begins with him acquiring one guinea fowl. Kennedy Blanket bred 368 fowls, sold 300, and used this to acquire assets that would help him with his farm. He also bought goats and cows. The demographic and age of people that the Food for Asset program helps ranges from the very old to the young. Elderly people are one of our key uh, target groups. People now are able to move forward and get involved because they realize the culture setting has changed. One can no longer now depend on extended family support. Everyone has to do something for themselves. So the age is not a limit. Even so, the elderly people need more support because they're the ones who are burdened with the responsibility of taking care of orphans. <laughs> Mango manji mani go say on se yige yigu ya go sigira go panso so mala bona manji mani Farming in Siavonga is challenging and anything that is challenging it's also exciting and for us this is where we have seen that our farmers are very creative 
because they are still able to get a crop out of the year of drought or the year of floods. One of the priorities of the Food for Asset program is to ensure that women have access to the facilities that will provide them with the possibility of a good livelihood. Margaret Hamonga is a former Food for Asset beneficiary and the program has helped her develop a sustainable livelihood. <laughs> So we got to come to the zoo with tea, and not to go into to sorry gumu, yam and jambuti and both sima cambuja goodia. You go and have gumuka have no tacambo, yellow just sima tajumi. Mumanja, to a tariga we have one now, but tariga gunka with you go over to for tariga guya masara di muman. Eh? For tariga gusama eating a hit So bote, I allo irandi qua head tariga guverega, Nino Janamadi. I tell it one million every month. Whereas the future seemed so bleak for many years, they can now see a brighter future for themselves and for their children. So already this year, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to 2.8 million. Women are usually found to be the caretakers of households, and empowering them is ensuring food security for their children and communities. The people of Siavonga have shown a tenacity and dedication when it has come to building a living for themselves. Tilombabio Muses or Yungu Tuarigis, Rusum Pogon, Lutuari Patulico, or Rogobamba Jedin. Moambora got in it to our Calamus or you, Tuarari Pengede, Tuarari Menda, Mbongo, Agari, I would take it a via Mutwe, Wag, Hagumonga Menda, we Pagoti, Higambora, or as Muses or Gutiani, or Bambara Tamwa. Kwagabana kuti menda mazuba akakala kala usika mumajurai bakatu gwaba vesti bakatu etera ji hole hole tulanya muna iga bakuswa bulongo mbobwe mwana waka ikutovela kata muka tia ni wako mena kwa tini ino tulabambahi kwa vika nsui kuhi ni nsui mwenomu hii kwa hebana inga nivalo bali ya bana bala sambala oja naka sipa oja naka bope nika kutole haku jikolo nsui hili momu Growing food in Siavonga and Gwembe districts is hard because climatic conditions are not favorable. For the farmers, many times it has been a hard and fruitless venture. So we see the judge in the Indi, the Lady Magabo to Jaguti, or Lodu Hore Hore. Tanizzi and the Papi of Ambic and Baja William were once under the Tani Dirges. Murio Magogamana, the Galum, the Galum, the Mapoga, Masaka, my fifty K, G one ten. So on the Gasamba and the Gaulagam, or Munganda and Masaka and his mind. One of the most successful examples of the Harvest Help Food Security projects has been the gardens. 
Most of the beneficiaries have thriving gardens that are yielding enough for food and also for sales. 2060 this year, silver catering. So tu ona TV vintu vitu pasa ndrama maningi kuchira mirisi na tomato na dereri. One of the projects that Harvest Help has embarked on is linking growers to markets so that even as they are growing produce, they are assured of a readily available market. Yes, Our market uh, strategy basically looks at the potential local market and the outside Siavonga uh, market. What we have been able to do is uh, look at the products that we are able to consume within Siavonga and any excess can be exported out of Siavonga. We've even uh, introduced a link with the Silver Food Solutions where we are engaging our farmers into food processing, mainly uh, vegetable drying so that there's really like no pressure for the farmers to worry about the market. If uh, farmers' uh, market linkages are sound and strong, it means they can increase their production. It also means they can be self, they are sustainable in terms of uh, looking at how their future will be. They become the masters of their own future. Mm -hmm. Fifty bucks, one time. No problem. We were smelled by uh, Harvest Help. We came all the way from uh, uh, Siavonga and we were very happy. And what we would normally do is that uh, when we train the farmers, then we sign the memorandum of understanding. And once we have signed that memorandum of understanding, it means that. We are going to uh, be buying the products from them. We don't buy products from any farmer who has never passed through our hands because we want to maintain the quality, the highest quality uh, of um, uh, processing. Mm -hmm. So you can pay. We have certified they are okay. Okay. No sand, nothing. It was dried nice. Okay. Okay, so about 3 kgs times 10,000 is about 430,000. Okay. Even though the project has come to an end, uh, many of these people have actually continued to expand the activities. As an example, the, the fisheries program. Um, the, the people started uh, digging their own small uh, sort of uh, containment areas. Uh, they managed to get some good water resources inside um, and initially only in the area of the project. Now we see that they have seen that providing them with such a good income source that they've expanded outside of the area and it has actually become one of the major sources of the fish that you and I eat when we go to Siabonga, which is a very good thing and the fish is delicious. The people, through their commitment and the tremendous support that the World Food Program has provided, have shown that they are capable of making a living. The evidence of lives being transformed by the assistance 
rendered by the World Food Program, presents the daily successes recorded by the beneficiaries in the way they conduct their work and plan for their future. This model employed by Harvest Help and their beneficiaries ensures continuity and even as the beneficiaries are weaned off of the programs, they move into a lifestyle that they can sustain and improve on year by year.